Hi there, my name is Mason Cole, and today I will be presenting to you our second video project on a physics problem in Physics 211. My group mates are Colin Flores and Benjamin Paul, who did the algebra for this problem, and I'll be the one who presents it to you today. So, as the rest of you may know, we were given three different problems to choose from for this project. Our group decided to choose to work on the one that involved the boxes and the springs. For this problem, we are given two boxes, one of mass B and mass R. But for <clears throat> the sake of simplicity, we will, refer, we will refer to these boxes as the blue box and the red box as shown in the picture below. Both boxes are sitting level on a frictionless horizontal surface. On the far left of this surface, the blue box is in contact with a spring of constant K and has been compressed a certain distance of XI, or initial position. With the blue box initially at rest, the box of mass B, or blue box, begins to move towards the right until it collides with the red box. With these two boxes now stuck together, they slide toward the right end of the surface where there is an identical spring and come into contact with it and cause it to compress. For this problem, we are trying to solve for the maximum distance that the right spring is compressed by the boxes. In this visual, which represents the process of the problem we are trying to solve, as you can see in step one, the box or the blue box is sitting at rest against a compressed spring, which the spring which the spring will then decompress and push the blue box to the right as in step two, where the blue box clashes into the red box, forcing them both to move right, as in step three, where both boxes stuck together, come into contact with spring number two and cause it to compress. The way we thought about this problem is that we viewed it as an energy problem and an impulse problem. It starts with a compressed spring that is released and pushes a block forward, which is energy. From here, the block travels along the frictionless surface until it connects with the other block and continues moving after that, which is an impulse. From here, the, the blocks stuck together continue sliding until they connect with an identical spring on the other side and compress it some distance, which, <clears throat> which is energy as well. We are looking for that final spring compression at, for our final answer. These are the equations we used in our <clears throat> for this problem. The U spring, which was equal to one half the mass times the velocity squared. Impulse, which is equal to the mass times the final velocity minus the mass times the initial velocity. And then the kinetic equation, which is one half times the mass times the initial velocity squared. So the first step was finding the initial velocity. We use the potential energy for a spring and the kinetic energy formulas as a starting point to find initial velocity. We put them equal to each other because it, it is the final velocity minus the initial. So we skipped ahead and put them equal to each other. The one halves cancel out, which just leaves us with the second equation, which is the k constant times the initial position squared, which is equal to the blue box or the mass of the blue box times the initial velocity squared. The next step after that <laughs> is to set the equation equal to the initial velocity squared, which we do by dividing by the mass of the blue box, which gives us the constant k times the initial position squared over mass of the blue box, which is equal to the initial velocity squared. And then for the final step, we square both sides, which gives us the square root of the constant k times the initial position squared divided by the mass of the blue box, which is equal to just the initial velocity. For the second step, we are solving for the impulse. We're using the impulse formula for the instance or at the instance that the two blocks are colliding. Since they collide and stick together, the final velocity would be a smaller value due to a loss of energy with them colliding and now traveling together. We put the final velocity and the two masses added together on the other side of the equal sign and then divided by the masses over the initial velocity. Then we replace the initial velocity in the equation with the answer we got from the previous formula.
as you can see here. We get the mass of the blue box times the initial velocity divided by the mass of the blue box plus the mass of the red box, which equals the mass of the blue box times the square root of the constant k times the initial position squared divided by mass of the blue box, all divided by mass of the blue box plus the mass of the red box, which is equal to our final velocity. Next, we are solving for our final position. We use the kinetic energy formula for the initial energy and the, <clears throat> and the potential spring energy for the final. The halves cancel each other out, and then we square root the initial velocity on the initial velocity, which cancels out the mass of the blue box plus the mass of the red box <clears throat> on the outside of the velocity to create the formula on the bottom. As you can see, the halves cancel out, and then the square root on the initial velocity is canceled out by the square, which gives us the equation of the mass of the blue box times the k constant times the initial position squared divided by the mass of the blue box plus the mass of the red box, which is equal to the k constant times the final position squared. Now, we divide that entire equation by the k constant to cancel it out on both sides. We then square root both sides to get the final position by itself. Finally, to make it look clean, we took the initial position to the outside of the square root because it is, because it is being squared on the inside of the square root, which gives us our final equation to find the final position of the second spring, which comes out to be the initial position times the square root of the mass of the blue box divided by the mass of the blue box plus the mass of the red box. To verify our units and to make sense of our problem, we set the units for position as meters and for the mass it is kilograms. So when we insert them, these units into the formula, the masses will cancel each other out, and then we are left with the meters on each side of the equal sign, which is what we want. The answer also makes a physical sense, as we can expect the final distance compressed to be smaller than the initial compression. This is because as the blocks slide along and hit each other, the impulse causes a decrease in velocity, which in turn affects the rest of the equation and leads to a smaller final compression. We can also look at how each variable affects different parts of the equation. To start, the k constant has no bearing on the equations because both springs are identical. Excuse me. The velocities are important for finding the impulse, but they also depend heavily on the mass, which means they can't really change the equation unless something inside them, such as the mass itself, has already changed, meaning they have basically no bearing on the final equation. The mass also has a huge am impact on the final answer as the mass of both the blue and red boxes dictate how much the spring compresses in the end. The initial compression is also important because it also has a direct impact on how much the final spring will move. In comparison to other problems, we have similarities and differences. One of the problems that we chose that had similarities to was from one of the activities from Studio 8, Spe specifically activities 1 and 2, which is seen on the slide. These activities focused on springs and finding how much it compressed after it released. The project problem relates to these activities through the use of springs and calculating the compression of a spring from motion. There are further similarities in the sense-making strategies as confirming units should return the same values. Even though there may be similarities, these, pro these problems also have their differences. The biggest difference is that the studio activities had a block that was attached to the spring while the project problem had two blocks running into each other and compressing the spring. This changes a number of things, but importantly it is pushing the spring out of equilibrium instead of moving from a stretch state towards equilibrium. Sorry for the weird cut, guys. I, my computer glitched out and stopped my recording midway through as I was going through this part. But I'll start over just for say, for simplicity's sake. Alright, so, in comparison to other problems, 
The impulse part of the project of this project problem is also related to several impulse problems that we have covered in our homework, lectures, and studios. We picked activity 3 from week 9 studio because it has a clear visual impulse. The biggest similarities of these problems is that they involve impulse and one block hitting another. For the differences, one of the most important things to notice is that in the project we are dealing with an inelastic collision where the blocks stick together while the studio activities focus on elastic collisions and how mass affects impulse. Doing activities like the studio, even if they are different, can help us understand how impulse works and why it is important for problems like these. So, with that conclusion to the comparison and differences to other problems, that also concludes this presentation on our problem that we chose for our group project. I hope it was easy to follow and easy to understand. My, the words or the speech itself might have been a little confusing, but I hope the visual rep representations were good. Thanks for listening, and I hope your guys' projects went swell as well.